Okay, go. So, I picked out the songs for tonight, not this week. It was weeks ago, because I actually pick up, it's pecan picking up season. I don't know what you call that. So I didn't know what songs I would be doing tonight. And I didn't really make the connection to what we're going to be talking about. And then Randall uh, actually gave a word about this, what we're going to be talking about. And I didn't hear all of the ends, but I know it had something to do with loving people. So um, I only caught the tail end of it. So, so I was grabbing the mic and everything to make sure we were all ready to go. But, um, and so it just kind of, you know, I didn't tell them what I'm talking about. So I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, we're going to be looking at the, I called it the last straw. So you, you know, you know, when, I'll, I'll use the microphone because you can't hear it in here, but we're recording it up there. You, you know when you're dealing with somebody who's really annoying? I like talking about dealing with annoying people because we've all done it. <laughs> Unless you are the annoying person, then everybody is annoying, right? <laughs> um, and, and for a while, you bluff your way, right? But eventually, <laughs> eventually they wear you out. <laughs> Like, I, I really didn't like you when I first got to know you, but now that I really know you, I really don't like you. <laughs> and, uh, and one day, one day this glorious day comes and you don't have to deal with them anymore. Maybe, maybe it was a work buddy and they get, tra they get transferred or something, but either way, hey, they're not your problem anymore. Oh, oh, thank God. Oh, no, I'm talking about in life. In life. God, please don't let them in. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, but then one day you don't have to deal with them anymore, and you're all happy, and then someone just like them comes. Yeah. Oh, oh, God, why <laughs> do you do you want to see me suffer, God? <laughs> um, except now you're already had enough of them, and so for round two, you're already tired from the first round. So this person just reminds you of the other person. You haven't even given them a chance yet because they just remind you of that annoying person. And so you're even shorter with them than you were the first go around. <coughs> That's what we like to call the last straw. If you turn it to 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I'm not going to really go real far on the details. But uh, David had been uh, chased. David was this guy in Israel that's up, uh, he's the runner up for king. And uh, the present king has been chasing him all over Israel. That's a long story short there. And uh, so eventually the, he kind of, you know, goes off and has, you know, a little a miniature harem and everything starting and his little nomad wanderers that travel around with him and everything. Uh, this little army. And he goes and, and joins with some of Israel's enemies. Um, long story about that. That's for another day. But in chapter 30, um, they've been sent home. And so here they are. We'll start from verse 1. And then it happened. When David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had made a raid on the Negev and on Ziklag. Now that's where they were. So just in case you're not familiar with these things. They had been at Ziklag. Okay? That's, that's, that's the place they'd been. But these people called the Malachites had come in and raided while they were gone with the Philistines. Okay, so um, there in verse 1. Uh, had made a raid on the Negev. And the Negev is southern, uh, southern Israel. It's basically a, a hill, a hilly area. Uh, and had overthrown Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they took captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great, without killing anyone, and carried them off and went their way. Okay, so they had come and raided, taken, and left. When David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and all people who were with him lifted their voices and wept until there was no strength in them to weep. So just so you know what's going. They've been gone at war. While they were gone, all their stuff was plundered, their families were taken, and that's what they come home to. So they're already tired. <laughs> they're already tired. They've already been traveling. And now they get home to this. Oh, boy. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> As if, as if Christmas wasn't hectic enough, huh? <laughs> so, okay. Um, in verse 5. Now David's two wives had been taken captive, Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. 
for all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and his daughters. See, now they're so they're so irritated, they're so tired that now they just want to kill David because I mean, there's nothing else they can do. Uh, but David <coughs> strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Now, I that's kind of the the part I want to want to know. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Well, we, we talk about you know getting strength from the Lord a lot, but we don't. What does that actually look like? So let's hold on. We'll look at there. Okay, verse seven. Then David uh, said to Abithar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, please bring me the ephod. So Abithar brought the ephod to David. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And he said to them, Pursue, for you will surely overtake them, and you will surely r rescue all. Well, that's good. <laughs> um, so first up, there comes a point. When we, reach, when we reach the end of our strength and we can't go on. That's just a matter of life. Specifically, as, as I'm talking about tonight, as it, as it deals with annoying people. You know, there's just, we all have our breaking points. You know? uh, we were watching this uh, spy show, it was called Chuck. And uh, uh, one of the, one, this nerdy guy asked the spy, he says, but they won't break. Well, they, they're not going to rat us out, right? And the other spy says, everybody breaks. That's just... A way everybody has a breaking point. You know, some of us may be hardier than others, but at the end of the day, if we keep plowing along in our own strength, we eventually reach a dead end. <coughs> but what some people try to do is instead of finding strength in, um, from God, they try to hype themselves up for a second wind. You know what I mean? We're okay. And they pump themselves up and they. I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with this in my person, I'm going to do it. And then at the end of the day, they're like, oh, that was so tired. And I have to keep doing that every day because well, they're, they're done, you know, so they keep, they, by the way, I'm not, I'm not doing things, it's the chair. I know, I know it sounds like things are happening, but they're not. Um, so if you look up here on the, on the screen, these two, these two uh, triangles represent uh, kind of how this works, okay? Let me get this thingy here. So here is our strength. And you can't really see it with this, so I'll just use my finger. Here is our strength, okay? We start out done with this annoying person or a circumstance or whatever, and you know, okay, all right, we're good. But then gradually, we, it just wears us down, and eventually we reach this point here. Now, if we don't do anything about it, that's kind of where we hang out, mm -hmm. and then we just get into a bit mean, nasty mood, and we just can't deal with anybody because everybody does something that I that I, see. The thing about Hating people or being bitter towards people is it's never bitterness is never happy. If you can't deal with one person, eventually, <coughs> eventually, you'll start see it creeping into other areas with people, even people that you do like. You know, because you either have to love unconditionally, which is the definition of love. You can't love conditionally; it's 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 an oxymoron. Or you will not love. See, that's the thing that makes God, one of the things, not the thing, but one of the things that makes God so good is because he loves everyone. Yeah, he does. Right. So it just blows your mind, but that's, you know, and, and here's, here's another thing that really blows your mind here. He doesn't get tired of it. <laughs> that blows my mind, because I kind of get tired of people. So. If that's the case, Michael, maybe I'll be gone. Right? <laughs> how, how annoying can I be before God's tired? <laughs> um, okay. So the only real fix to getting to the end of our strength, the only fix for that is to get strength from God. But that brings us to the, to the million dollar question. How do we get strength from God? <laughs> That's easier said than done. Have you ever been, okay, I'm really super irritated. This is a terrible situation. I want to get strength from God, but how? What do I do? Is there some magic ritual that I do? You know, and so then we just keep going around this, this irritating thing over and over again, never really getting an answer, but not really knowing what to do. You know, and so, we, well, yeah, my strength is in God. How? What does that mean? What does that mean? It's like, well, let's look at that. So, first off, if you look in verse 6, we get a little bit of a clue. It says, remember, we're in 1 Samuel chapter 30, so go back to verse 6. Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him, for all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. So the first thing, spend time with God. That's the first real simple way to get strength from God. That, that's it. I mean, it's not... It's not difficult. We make things difficult because we like to have more. 
we're not happy unless we, we've sufficiently told ourselves that we've done enough things. Not just about salvation, about life in general. You know, like, how are you saved? Well, first you do this, and then this, and then this, and then it's not that complicated. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's simple. It's not like it's this, you know, many-tier thing, you know, these steps to God. It's, it's one and done. That's it. You know? We make things complicated. So the first way of getting strength from God is spending time with God. So what does that look like? Well, that looks like prayer. Now, I'm not talking, obviously, just... <laughs> I'm not trying to offend anybody here. Really, I'm not. So I, I, when I say prayer, I'm not talking about those little prayers where you're really irritated and you say, Oh, God. Not like that. And I'm not talking about those little prayers, that, you know, those little memorized prayers where you pray for five minutes a day and then you get a boom. I'm talking about a prayer where you really punch through to God. You know what I mean? Think of it as a big brick wall of all your nasty attitudes and all your uh, all the past and all those things that irritate you and all those things. And think of every 30 minutes of prayer being a pickaxe to the brick wall. Well, it's going to take a while to get through that brick wall, huh? We'll just keep chiseling away. You'll get there eventually. Everything is broken down in prayer eventually. You just got to keep going. Um, so, and then what is also the like worship? Now, worship isn't music. Worship is a lifestyle. It's, it's, it's presenting ourselves as uh, acceptable to God. So, when I say worship, I'm talking about don't do things that you know that God doesn't want you to do. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to make this legalistic, but if God doesn't want you to do something, well, then don't do it. But that also includes music, too. See, music is the outpouring of our heart. See, if, if you try to impress God by singing Him a song, that's not going to do anything. If you try and look for songs that really touch you and give you the tingles or, or make you feel good, you're missing the point of worship. See, worship comes when our hearts are so dedicated to God, we're, we're, we're so set on Him and His ways, that from that heart comes praise. When you go through terrible situations, death and all kinds of different things, and instead of sitting around griping, you say, Lord, you're good. That's it. Lord, you're good. Now, that, that, that's praise. Now, here's, here's the problem that we have with worship, is we think we can only worship God if we feel it. That's the biggest mistake. Worship to God is especially when you don't feel it. Especially when you're mad. Especially when you're angry. Especially when you're bitter. And instead of ranting and raving and posting stupid stuff on Facebook, you take the time to say, God, you're just good. Not Worship isn't separate from trials. It's a result of trials. There's a big difference there. See, we think we have to be good enough to offer, you know, a song like, Lord God, I just don't feel like worshiping today, so I'm just not even going to try. That the, misses the idea. Totally misses the idea. Uh, what else does it look like uh, reading the Word? I did an experiment. Uh, I went two years of reading the Bible every single day. And then I didn't read the Bible for a single day for six months. I wanted to know if it was going to have any effect. Because I've already, people always tell me that. Oh, well, reading the Bible does this or that or the other thing. I didn't believe it, so I tried it out myself. I was younger, and I, would I do it again nowadays? I don't know about that, but let's just spare with me here. So I did that. And at the end of those six months, I had a harder time with panic attacks and anxiety and depression. I felt less grounded in reality, like what was not, not like I was, ooh, I mean like I wasn't. Okay, so when you're seeking God, you know, he's leading you here. And that's not really, I really had no direction. You're just kind of floating out there, you know. And then your idea of God kind of gets a little bit skewed. Because eventually you're going to read something in the Bible that, that upsets you. Like, for instance, God's saying, hey, go into Canaan and kill all those people. And children too. Well, Eventually, you're going to read something like that, and it's going to bother you, and it's going to keep you up at night. And you're going to say, how can a good God do this? How can a good God say this? Or when it says in Genesis that God regretted that he made people. How do you deal with these things? And so you're going to read something, and eventually, eventually, that's just going to upset you about God. See what I mean? But as we study the Word, we actually get to know God more, and we get to learn things about God. And the thing is, we'll read something through one time, and we'll see something that we didn't see before. And then we'll go through it again, and we'll see something else that we didn't see. You know, it, the Word is just powerful like that. And I don't want to spend too much time, because it's already getting too late. But 
Uh, so then the second thing um, is uh, obeying God. If you look in verse 8 through 9, okay? So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And he said to, said to him, Pursue, for you will surely overtake them, and you will surely rescue all. So David went. So David went. Oh, God, speak to me. Okay, thank you for speaking. Okay, well, go do it. Go do it. Like, what are you... <laughs> you told me to speak to you, so I spoke to you, so now do it, you know? Like, what are you talking about? It's one of the... Sometimes some of the traps that we can fall into is we come to a church, and God's really moving. I'm sorry, a service, and God's really moving, especially like a word maybe is given to us, and we just hang on to that, and then we just maybe hang on to it for a day or two, and then we just kind of forget and move on. So you mean, well, that's not really what God meant. He meant for us to, okay, yeah, those, those words to encourage us, but then he meant for us to carry through. Like when he says, hey, don't keep, don't, don't, don't forget to seek after me. Well, what should you do? That's your homework assignment. Keep seeking after God. So these two very easy steps, that's how you get strength from God. You spend time with him and you obey him. See, the problems won't magically go away. And we kind of live in a culture where we're, we're, we're used to getting things with no effort. I mean, honestly, yeah. if I don't work hard enough, now, I, I don't mean this to offend anybody, so please understand what I'm saying. If I am physically able to work, and I don't work hard enough, and I don't get money, I can just go and get a check from the government. Now, I, once again, I understand there are many reasons for getting, I'm not, not trying to make fun of anybody, not trying to offend anybody, but if I'm physically able, and I choose not to work, and just have somebody else pay the way for me, see what I mean? We're used to that kind of stuff in our culture. It just kind of... It's okay to... Here's another thing. I, you guys know me. I, I, I deal with panic attacks and stuff like that. A lot of times people with panic and depression, they, well, I have a problem with panic and depression, so you just need to understand my problem and, and cater to me. No, you have a problem with panic and depression, get up, deal with it. Keep fighting it. Don't lie on the ground and die. I mean, goodness yeah. sakes, yeah, you have problems, we all have problems. Some people have cancer. Do you want them to just sit in the hospital and die? No, you fight it. You fight it until you are dead, and then you go to heaven and you're all happy. But in the meantime, fight! 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 For oh goodness sakes! Anyways, um, so just a few more things. Uh, well, at least it had a happy well, ending. Right? What we're told, especially if you watch TV evangelists, this is really what they, what they really hype and pipe on, okay? Avoid people in situations that irritate you. Just avoid it. That way, you can just... Go and be happy with God. Well, that's not how it works. God wants us to deal with annoying people because he loves them too. And in dealing with annoying people, we grow as a person. So this is absolutely terrible advice. This is kind of what it looks like, okay? This is how it's going to look like. Someone's going to come along it's going to irritate you. Whatever it is. And then you're not going to feel like dealing with it. Let me just go ahead and break the ice there. Let me bail you out here. You're not going to feel like dealing with it. Okay? But that takes us to the third step. Instead of avoiding the problem or running or being bitter or angry or whatever, pray and worship. That's simple. Get alone with God, pray and worship. And then, after you have, one, spend time with God, go to two, obey God. Respond how Christ would. But they wronged me. I have no doubt that they wronged you. People wrong people all the time. <laughs> Look at the news and you can see how people do that. But you do what Christ would do in the situation. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's kind of how the progress goes there. Life is full of irritations. You can't always run. I used to listen to this band called Dogwood, and they had this part on the song where it says, Not me. I'm through running. You can't be up all the time. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a good time. 90s music. It was just great. Anyways, uh, I'm sure Dad remembers that one. Um, good point, my friend. He remembers the 70s. <laughs> God can give you lasting results in time. So here's the thing. You, can't, you won't feel like doing it, but God's strength isn't about what we feel like doing. God's strength is not about what we feel like doing. So what is it about? One, it's about giving up our will for his commands. Being a Christian is more caving our will to God's will than it is any other thing. Because God is a direct attack to my pride. I don't want to do things that way, God. And then what does he say? This is how you do things. <laughs> we want to live life our way. And it doesn't matter what we're talking about. That's just the fight of being alive. And that's just the way it goes. So, uh, this is the first thing. Um, 
Our attitudes and views will change eventually, <laughs> though many times the situation doesn't. So giving up our will, allowing our attitudes and feelings and, and those kind of views and stuff, allowing them to be changed. Because when we're in the middle of that irritating situation, we don't want to say, okay, I'm going to love you. you we want to say, you need to shut up. And we want to slap somebody around. But that's not what Christ would do, now is it? No. So then we think, well, it's righteous. It's righteous anger. No, it's not righteous anger. You just can't keep your mouth shut. There's nothing righteous about that. This is righteous anger. Praying for them. And doing good to them. That's righteous anger. And people always talk about, well, what about Moses when he got angry and he smashed the tablets? Well, actually, God made him go back up and do it again. So I don't think he was too excited about Moses' little temper tantrum. So let's put things in perspective here. We like to give ourselves little excuses for being stupid. And that's just, well, they did something wrong, so I can do something wrong. Well, they did something wrong, so I can have righteous anger. Well, okay, but God's not going to like it. Um, so allow your attitudes to change. God's strength is found in action. Persevering in trials. That's how you get strength from God. You persevere through the trial. Well, I don't have any strength to. Do it anyways. You just keep seeking God and you keep responding as you should now. Don't worry about tomorrow. Do it now. God, I don't have strength. I don't know what to do. I'm just, I'm just seeking you now. And you just keep doing that. And then after you really mess things up and you keep messing up things, things you're going to mess up some more stuff and do it again and more. And then eventually you'll slowly <coughs> not get the hang of it. But you just keep going and eventually you still won't have the hang of it. And you just keep going and, and slowly you start making better decisions. <laughs> That's kind of how God's strength works. Uh, besides persevering in trials, forgiving people. When somebody wrongs you and you let it go. Um, and sometimes God's strength is found in just this, com this small little comfort in our spirit. Where God will just come by and say, you know what? It's okay. But I tell you what, if you're looking for God to give you that little comfort, if you're not spending time in worship and prayer and, and in his word, it's not going to happen. <clears throat> Maybe when you first get saved it'll happen. But after a while, God gets tired of changing poopy diapers. <laughs> I mean, he just doesn't like it. He's like, well, you're 30-something years old. Move out of my basement. Come on. Well, and then uh, it's not by a group hug and all problems going away. That's not how God's strength is given to us. It's by enduring the trials. What does James say? Let it have its perfect way so you'll be mature. Let it have its way. But I want to give up. I know you do. Keep seeking God. Keep, keep, keep obeying God. Keep doing it now. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just do it now. Well, I think tomorrow I might break. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow is its own day. You take care of today. Just do it now. Well, I already messed up. If you messed up, check this out. Apologize to God and get up and go again. It's, it's okay. It's all right. We're moving forward. But I messed up. We're moving forward. Uh, okay. Just a few more things. We really have to ask ourselves, what do I really want? <coughs> do I want God's strength in his ways or my strength in my way? Because you can't have both. God's strength or my strength? God's ways or my ways? You, you can't have both. You can't live your own way and get whatever results you want. God already told us in the law, if you live your own way, it's going to be death and curse and terrible time. If you live my way, you're still going to have problems. But hey, it's going to be blessings and, and, and those are happy days. Those are golden days living with God. So anyways... Um, this is a timely process, but you can do it. It is a very timely process. Getting strength from God isn't something where you just... Right. Getting strength from God isn't something where, okay, God, I prayed, and it was good. I was in a good service. I'm good. Well, Monday's going to come eventually, guys. <laughs> and when it does, it hits hard. So when it does, guess what? God is the God of Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday. <coughs> So we don't have to just get fed on Sunday. We can feed ourselves in his word and by spending time in prayer every day. And then we don't have to be on the last straw. And eventually, you're, understand this, eventually your, your attitude will change. You won't be so quick-tempered. It won't be so hard to love people. It, eventually. But the thing is, is we want, well, God, I prayed. So fix it. <laughs> and, well, God's saying, I am. Just give it time. Just give it time. So we're going to go ahead and stop there. Um, I hope 
you guys had a fantastic Christmas. And uh, don't forget, we will have, have service on Sunday. And uh, next Wednesday is not canceled. No, none of the services are canceled. None, regular services are canceled through uh, to the new year. Uh, so uh, can I have, um, Pastor Randy, can you close us in prayer, please? Yeah. Lord, we thank you for this word, Lord, and for encouragement and strength, Lord, to do the right thing and to follow you. And God, we give you all the praise and the glory. God, help us to uh, stay in the word, stay in prayer, and really have a mind to obey.